Hello and welcome to another episode of Team of Road CC. Today I'm going to be getting a bike fit. That means that me and the Cross Hill are travelling to just outside Bath to meet Tony Korg who is a professional bike fitter. With the help of Tony and some really cool bike fitting technology, we're going to figure out how to make this bike even more comfortable and even more faster for my upcoming race season. So let's dive straight into Tony's bike fitting studio and get started with the fit. Welcome. I'm happy that you're here today for a bike fit. I'm excited. So thanks for coming in. Um, there's a few things I want to ask you before we get into the bike fit, just mm -hmm. to, so we can be sure what we're going to do today. Because there's lots of things we can do. Um, and so I want to do a brief uh, interview, just to understand a little bit more about what you're planning to do on this bike, and also uh, if you have any injury history, or what your muscular flexibility like, anything that might change how your body moves. Um, and then we're going to go through a comparative testing process to look at all of the different elements of the bike setup, basically all the jobs that your body needs to do and test your body for the easiest way of doing those jobs. And then we're also going to use some of the technologies to help you understand some of the decisions we've made, all in the name of trying to help you achieve your goals, which sounds like you want to go faster. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, and so I'm going to hopefully help you to understand how any of the changes we make, how they do that, how they make SUV win the championship, <laughs> the e-bike uh, uh, events that you've got to race at. Yeah. yeah, sounds perfect. Let's get started. So, Tony, what are we going to do now that you know kind of what I want out of this bike fit? Glad you asked. Basically, we're going to see how your body performs for the three main jobs. How much we can stretch you out with your legs, how much we can stretch your spine and your arms out, how much you can bend over, which is handlebar height, and then we're going to look at balancing your body mass. So we leave most of your body mass going through the saddle and through your feet, not through your hands and arms. Our bodies don't really like bearing mass through there. And this is what makes your bike fit or your bike feel comfortable, efficient, powerful, I can just sit on it and it feels right. And actually, I'm not thinking about it. I can just ride the bike and all the energy that I've got for pedaling goes into pedaling instead of trying to hold a position or I'm weakened because this is too far away or too close. Yeah, So I'm seeing signs here. of overextension in your legs and overextension in your arms and shoulders, just not wanting to sit into the hoods. Ideally, we want to get you here because that's where you can control the yeah. bike from. At the moment, it's really heel of the hand yeah. Whereas yeah. if you go right into the hoods, you get much more of the hand supported. Yeah, but you yeah. don't want to do that now because the shoulders then get uh, pulled yeah. forward and that literally weakens you. So I want to do the balance test on you. The balance test is, let me explain it to you, whilst you're pedaling at your normal intensity and leaning over, I want you to let go with your hands and see if you can hold that position or whether uh -huh, you... Yeah, <laughs> can I reposition bar. myself on the saddle? <laughs> get ready to... <laughs> right, yeah. Core. Yeah. I can just about do it, but I do start going. Yeah. Do you feel that you're bracing your body mass with your arms, or do you feel it's just the weight of your arms through your hands and arms? It is maybe a bit more, more weight on them. Yeah. Again, if I'm here where I feel. Yeah. Then you can brace a bit better, but you also feel more. Low. Yeah. I've got another question for you about uh, the hoods versus the drops. So when you're pedaling, does it feel easier um, here? or here to pedal, or does it feel largely the same? Hmm. I think it feels easier to pedal when I'm on the drops. Come back up again. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm looking at, I'm basically assessing handlebar height, handlebar reach and handlebar height and mm -hmm. balance. So the balance test is to have a look how possibly stable you are, and I think there's room for improvement there. But getting you to test this also gives me an idea of gross flexion, how much you're bent over. And if you can come down to the drops, which you did, and it's easier to pedal, 
usually means that the bars are a bit too high on the hoods. Yeah. And it's just not as powerful feeling. And I come down to the drops, the shoulders will drop yeah. and relax, and they'll feel like, oh, my legs feel stronger. Okay, Suvi, so this is the capture of you cycling here. And one of the, some of the things that we wanted to point out about your, what we think is wrong with your position is leg extension. So that's the angle of your knee and your foot. And that can either create more or less pelvic stability. I think the saddle's a bit too high at the moment. Mm -hmm. And so there is movement in your pelvis here. And you can see that around this area, those two markers moving. If we grab this guy and spin him, uh, the knees won't track so straight up and down when the pelvis is, is challenged. So the saddle being too high is just pulling your pelvis from mm -hmm. side to side. Also looking at your spinal angle and your shoulders and your elbows and the way you're sitting on the bars. If we, when we get you to actually sit on the hoods, then you can see your elbows straightening out and your shoulders starting to pull forward, which is not something we want. You could even feel that, right? Yeah, it yeah. starts to destabilize you, makes you weaker. Um, and also the shoulder position relative to the spine I think the bars are a bit high what we've got this kind of position where it's sort of pushing up on you mm -hmm. and when we see you down in the drops your shoulders just relax so these are signs that uh, these things are not quite right okay so we made some assessments about your current position mm -hmm. and there's evidence here that your saddle's too high your handlebars are too far away from you the handlebars are also too high and that the saddle angle is not quite right yeah um, so what I want to do next is move across onto the jig so we can figure out what's right um, and then we can compare the two. That sounds good. So this is an automated bike fitting jig. So all that means is that I can press buttons and move this around whilst you're still pedaling so you don't have to stop. And that makes it marginally easier for, uh, for me and also for you to feel these changes. Because uh, the two main pieces of information we're going to get out of this is me watching how your movement patterns change and also you feeling for any uh, changes in ease of movement. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing to mention about this process is that uh, we're just trying to find the easiest way of doing the different jobs and essentially I'm going to test you, comparative test you, so for saddle height raise and lower it until we find the sweet spot where it's as easy as possible for you to push on the pedals and we'll assess that based on your feeling of it mm -hmm. and also my visual observation. So let's get started. To be able to complete the push phase without then having to stretch any further mm -hmm. or without the, being, the saddle being too low where you can't finish the push phase. So at the two ends of the window is overextension where you're stretching to reach the bottom mm -hmm. or feeling compressed or, or cramped. So I'm going to move the saddle to find where those windows occur so that we then know where the sweet spot is. Okay. So right now we're going higher. So that's five mil higher of the saddle height. Did you feel it change? Yeah, but not. Yeah. It's not a huge. Yeah. So difference. you felt it change, but it didn't change the feeling of pedaling. No. Eventually it will. Like right here, you've hit overextension. I can see yeah. that. And does that does that feel any? Yeah, different? I feel like yeah, it starts to now feel like on the leg. Yeah. What What are you and feeling? I'm that it's pulling the leg somehow, or? How would you describe it? Just that I'll go like toe. Po pointing the yeah. toes? Yeah. Like I need to almost like I need to move my feet more. Your feet don't want to, but they have to, to get to the bottom of the pedal stroke. Yeah. yeah. And that's basically making it a little bit harder than it really needs to be. So let's go down with the sound height. You know, that's too high. So that's five mil lower. And that should move you back into your optimum window where you feel like, oh, that's just a little bit easier, right? Yeah. Now that we've taken that stress away and come down, you should just feel like, oh, that's a bit better. Yes. And probably smoother. When we went up, you only had a couple of seconds of that feeling. Yeah. But then we started talking and then you had a couple of minutes of overextension and that compounds and it starts getting worse. Yeah. And then you immediately take it away again. And you're like, oh, that feels yeah. better. So I'm going to move the saddle down again. That's five millimeters lower again. And what we eventually expect is a feeling of not quite being able to finish the downward push. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of that yet, or does it still feel fine? I feel it is already. Now some riders okay. feel it 
in the heel dropping. Yeah. Some riders feel it's just uh, more pressure in the foot. Some literally feel the knees are bent more and others feel like the legs coming high or just generally cramped. How do you experience it? I feel it's just, just that the, it's more, the knee comes, I don't know, knee comes higher. Yeah. Yeah. Just that it's shorter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how yeah. to. Right. It's hard to explain, but. Right. It just doesn't quite feel as yeah. easy. And what you're, what I think you're saying, what some people say is that um, they haven't really finished the push. The foot's come back before they finish the downward push. Yeah. Is that how you describe it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. There's, you have more to give, but you can't give it. Yeah. Because your foot's starting to come back before you finish that down push. Definitely. And that's really where all of our strength is when we pedal on that downward push. We've just tested you for the right saddle height. Mm -hmm. and what we found is that you've got a relatively small window for saddle height. So we found where you overextend, where the saddle's too high, and you felt that that was harder work, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the more you cycled like that, the harder it got. And we also found where underextension was, where you felt cramped up and you couldn't quite finish the push. Again, sort of losing power. Uh, and the window between those two is about six millimeters for you, which is smaller than other people's. Uh, so your actual functional window where it feels easy is like four millimeters. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, more than anyone else, uh, need to be particular about your saddle height. So when you're trying different bikes, you need to make sure it's, you know, it's spot on. Yeah. So one of the things you were complaining about or, or you said to me that you think you want to change is handlebar width because mm -hmm. you've got other bikes with narrow bars that just feel better. Yeah. Um, and so this is currently 42. How does this feel when you when you got these uh, the bars this wide? It just feels, yeah, just too wide, and I don't really know how to how to place my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So it just doesn't feel natural. You, you yeah. can't really sink into it. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, jig here, we can um, immediately swap them over so i'm going to take you down to a 38 and you can feel the difference it just feels like my hands naturally i don't need to go yeah. wider right and so you were saying you did before with it's too wide you didn't know where to put the shoulders they mm -hmm. don't know where to sit this just looks like they naturally found their position yeah and so uh, one of the things that's going on here is just a natural postural stability so your body can find that posture that allows it to support itself really easy. It feels a lot better. Like I'm not rocking as much. More stable on the and saddle. Yeah, exactly. And and when you're on the uh, drops as well, how's it feeling in the drops now? It feels better. Like both of them, everything feels better. <laughs> um, no, but I feel like I can use both. Both of these. Yeah. And neither feels too far up or too far down. Yeah. So, better. Okay, so now's the time we might want to jump back on your bike and see the feeling of the difference. Yeah. Can we try this one again? Let's do that. Okay, and do the same thing, get it up to intensity, try the lower intensity and the higher one, mm -hmm. and just uh, scan your body for those uh, sensations and uh, let me know how it feels. Yeah, it just feels like I'm moving a lot more, and I don't know. I would like to have my hand, hands very closer to get closer to my body. So when you're on the hoods here, you can feel that you're just, it's too far away. Mm -hmm, exactly. And you're saying you're feeling more movement, what, pelvic instability, can't, can't stabilize the pelvis so much? Yeah, I think it is the pelvis, but yeah. yeah. But then it starts to feel when I'm pushing like it's both, like up, like the whole, whole body is harder work to try to keep it steady yeah and so we go back to the two jobs that we're trying to make easier for you is pushing hard on the pedals and then posturally stabilizing and what we found from our work on the jig there is that this wasn't allowing your upper body to stabilize as well so literally making it harder to hold everything steady and still mm -hmm. whilst you're applying power to the pedals so what we did learn i thought you were overextending your legs to start with but what we learned is that you weren't you're actually within your window when you started on this. So cleat position and saddle height are good. It's just that the saddle angle is slightly off, mm -hmm. putting a bit too much weight on the front end, that your reach is too far away, overextending your arms, it destabilizes you. And that the bars were just too high. Mm -hmm. And that's why you felt like your shoulders were up and that you had more power down on the drops. 
um, and that the bars were too wide, which is what you thought already. Yeah, yeah. So um, the takeaways were that your cleats and your saddle height looks good. It's just the front front end of the bike needs mm -hmm. changing, and that is actually twenty five mil uh, difference. But you can't get a twenty five mil shorter stem, so we can go twenty mil longer, and that still puts you in your window. You'll be five mil longer than that, but still in your functional window. Okay. So on the long run rather than the shorter end of your So I have an 80 mil stem on this now, so I would go to... 60 mil. Yeah. And then also we want to take out all of the spaces here, mm -hmm. uh, which was 25. That's 25 mil lower yeah. on the front end. Quite a lot. Lower. Yeah. Um, so see what you can do. Sometimes there's a limit to how many spaces you can take out with the integrated cables. You might need to find a different kind of stem. So you're going to have to go shopping and see what you can find. Yeah, yeah. but it's good. I'll get to finally slam the stem, slam the stem <laughs> which I, yeah, exactly. I don't often get well, to do, which is, stem. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then the next stage of any bike fit is um, make the adjustments to your bike and then test it. Mm -hmm. So all the work we've done in here is really uh, so that you can ride outdoors better. And I don't know if we've achieved that until you go out and ride it. It takes about three weeks to get used to a new movement pattern, but after that there should be no further adaptation needed for this to feel good. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, then maybe we haven't nailed it and we need to come back and see you again. Yeah. There's also some other things that we can do to help improve your power that you could come back and do at a later date, which is set up the inside of the shoe better. Mm -hmm. That can help you feel even more stable. And we've also noticed that this, although this sound does work for you, we might want to choose something else. Yeah. Because there are something. some areas where it, it doesn't. You're talking about uh, it's largely comfortable but difficult to get the angle just right. Sometimes yeah. it puts too much pressure on the front. There might be a, another saddle out there that mm -hmm. does everything you want it to do. We can try, I'll try this setup with yeah. a new adjustment and then see how that goes. Yeah, feedback and then, to me. Let me know yeah. how it goes. Thank you so yeah. much. It yeah. was great, great pleasure. I feel much more confident that I can race well now. Good. Thank yeah, you. I'm excited for your races. Yeah, thank you. So that's the bike fit all done and I really hope that you enjoyed watching it and also learned something new. Both me and Liam are now all set on our bikes and we are pretty much ready to race but there's one aspect that we need to still cover and that is training and skills. So our next episode is going to focus all on that and we're going to have some really really cool guests in that video. So whilst you wait for that, make sure to check out Liam's episode where he got his suspension set up and give this video a like and I will see you in the next one.